Hey everyone, welcome to Show and Tell number 35. My name is Claudia and thank you for coming to hang out with me. Um, yeah, so it's been a little bit longer than I had anticipated. Um, I meant to record last Monday, so it would be every other week, get back to my normal schedule, but um, I was out of town most of the day, so that didn't happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that you guys have had a good few weeks. Um, Mine's been pretty good, but I'm going to wait to talk about the life stuff later at the end. Um, but I did want to say, if you guys are, you know, if you live on the um, East Coast, like the Southern East Coast, if you, you know, experienced any Hurricane Matthew situations, I hope that you guys are okay. I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably have electricity and, er electricity and everything, but um, I just hope that everything gets back to normal as much as it can for you guys. Um, it was, you know, I'm glad I don't have the weather channel because I know I would have been like glued to the TV. We don't have cable because we never watched it. So, <laughs> um, or at least never watched it enough to like warrant the price. Um, and Netflix is, and we had Netflix then too. So it was, it just seemed pointless. But anyway, off topic. Um, it was like I was checking my phone constantly for updates and like my tablet and everything. It was just crazy pants. Um, my husband's family lives in Florida and they were, you know, in the evacuation zone. So they had to evacuate. And um, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So um, they are fine. They are fine. They evacuated. I think they actually evacuated a little bit before it became mandatory. Um, I think they kept thinking that like the hurricane would weaken, um, and then it just didn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But anyway, so they evacuated inland quite a ways, um, not that far in, but you know, they went into, um, my sister-in-law's house and stayed there. Um, when the they live on an island, so like there's a bridge that goes over to the, over to the island, and they had it closed down. Like you, I think they were letting people walk over it, but they couldn't drive over it. They didn't want to. I think they just didn't want people driving. Um, but anyway, so eventually they opened it up so they could go, and they checked on their house, and they had heard that it wasn't that there was a lot of water. They live um, like half a mile in from the beach, from the coastline. And, you know, the storm surge went in pretty far. So the fact that I know what storm surge is <laughs> just tells you I've been like, yeah. But anyway, so it went in. It went in like pretty far. But I think on the section they live on is maybe a little higher elevation wise. So, um, and maybe back far enough and protected enough that it didn't. It didn't damage anything. I don't know if actually water got on the street or anything, but um, their house was okay when they checked it, so that's good. Um, then they went back and they stayed. They went back to my sister-in-law's house and stayed there. Um, I think I don't know if they are back, if they're going back home today or not. But a lot of places, you know, they don't have electricity or the water is off. I do believe that they have electricity and water, but I think they're like on a boil water advisory situation. Um, so they just stayed out, um, of the way, which, you know, I know there's a big cleanup effort and everything. I mean, like some of, some areas, I mean, it's just the devastation is, you know, I mean, some places like basically lost their beach. Like they don't have a beach anymore. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I just, I mean, it seemed like it wasn't as disastrous as it could have been because, I mean, if we talk about that and, like, we talk about what happened in, like, the Caribbean, like, Haiti and the Bahamas and things like that. I mean, like, the loss of life. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really bad. And I think it, it easily could have been a lot worse. And, um... But anyway, this is about knitting. I just brought that up. What's about knitting and crochet and all kinds of crafty goodness? Um, 
but I just wanted to bring that up to say that I hope you guys are all, all okay and that all of your families are okay and your house is okay and everything. I do know personally people that don't have power still um, and it messed, it messed the power grids up pretty severely. So yeah, hopefully by the time you're watching this, everything is okay again. <laughs> all right. So what are we be talking about today? So I have finished objects. What? And I have works in progress. Um, this time it's all knitting and I have purchases. You know, I purchased things. I bought a lot of stuff actually, but okay. Um, yeah, so let's do finished objects. So the first thing, I finished two charity hats. It is, they were living in this bag from um, South Park Creations, who is Aaron, give me Aaron 418 here on the YouTubes. Um, I believe this is the first bag I bought from her, and I think it, I don't know if that's my favorite or not, but I know it's the one that I use most often. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just little woodland creature people's little thing. Uh, stitch markers mine. And yeah, so I love it and I get a lot of use out of it. So hats. I did not we I wove in the ends on one, but not the other. So there you go. And I left a stitch marker on it. All right. <laughs> not prepared. Not prepared. So here they are. Um, okay. So I'll talk about the yarn in a second, but um, this is basically the Kit Kat hat by And uh, Andre Sunitz. It's a free pattern. Basically, you just cast on, and you do ribbing, and then you just work even, and then you three needle bind off. And you are supposed to tack down the ears. I have not done that yet, and I don't know if I'm going to or not. Um, but yeah, so I did, I didn't follow the pattern exactly. Like I can't remember, I can't even remember like the numbers and stuff she gives you for the pattern, but, um, here's what I did. So on the red one, I cast on 75 stitches and I did a three by two ribbing. So that way there's less purling. And, um, and then I worked... Let's see, that's about six and a half inches from the ribbing. Yeah. And then on this one, I cast on 70 stitches. Oh, I had to decrease one stitch before I did the three needle bind off. So there would be an even number. Um, on this one, I cast 70 stitches. I did three by two ribbing on the bottom. And I worked even about six inches from the ribbing. So yeah, so this one was a little bit smaller than this. You can see the difference. And you can see, um, well maybe you can't see that, but there is a little bit of a difference. You can see, you can see the difference in the, um, the way the yarn worked up. So the yarn is uh, from Knit Fix, and it was uh, during their Cyber Monday sale, which is coming around again, I'm sure. Um, this, I think can't remember if this, skein, this yarn was like a dollar a skein or maybe a dollar ninety nine a skein. Something ridiculously low. So of course I had to buy some. Um, and it looks like a big old mess. But there you go. It's a tonal yarn. Like it's, you know, kind of a, well, I mean it's variegated, but it's in the same tone family. Thin color family. So yeah. I, they don't have colors on them or anything, and it's not available anymore, but I bought four skeins, one each of red, gray, pink, and purple. The yarn itself, let's see if I can, I don't know if you can see, like it's, the texture of it's a little weird. You can see, kind of see it up here on this dark section up there. It's a little, it's not bumpy, but it's like, it's not smooth. It has a little bit of texture to it to itself, and it also has a little bit of a shine. Um, I'll be honest with you, I did not enjoy working with it as much as I would have hoped. Um, the also the yarn, like I, I don't know if I mean I'm sure maybe it wasn't meant to be a center pole ball, but I always reach in and grab the middle, and um, on you know skeins like this, you know when they're bigger. Um, 
and it, I had a really hard time with it. It was kind of knotted on the inside and it was a big mess. I mean, maybe that's my fault, but I did not enjoy that. And then, um, also it just, I don't know. It feels weird. And it's not that it's acrylic or anything like that because I don't care if it's acrylic or not. I use acrylic all the time. Um, it just, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy working with it. And so what I'm going to do with the rest of it, I might crochet with it and maybe like it'll be better crocheting, but I just felt like when I was knitting with it, it just felt like it just, I don't know. It was something that sometimes, you know, you get yarn, you just really don't enjoy it. And that was what was happening with this. And I normally don't have anything bad to say about most yarns, but this one, I just wasn't a fan, but it's, it's not even available anymore. So no big deal. Um, but you can see this one, the, it kind of flashed in a spiral kind of deal, which I really like, actually. I thought it was, I liked the way that that worked up. And then this one, um, worked more evenly through the body, but then the, this part is kind of spiral a little bit. So, yeah. So I think if you are going to use this yarn, if you have any of it, and, um, if you bought any last year, then, you know, you'll have to just check your gauge and see what's happening with the yarn, if it's something that you like. I thought this was actually kind of cute because it's like a Kit Kat hat, and I was like, I could put faces on them or something like that, make them like my little, I mean, they'll have little cat ears, um, but I don't know, so we'll see. So what happens with this hat, I'll get my hands in there, is you end up with these two little, like, it, like when you're hit, okay. I probably should have like used a model, but anyway, you end up with these two little ears. You tack them down so that way they are actually ear shaped and not and not and don't do that. So that could be cute too if you went that way. You'd have like like Batman ears. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean they're really not. It's you know it's a charity hat, and um, I do think it will be you know, warm for someone. So, um, I used size seven needles for the, uh, ribbing and size eight for the rest of the hat, both on both hats. And yeah, I did not weave them in, as you can see, but it'll be fine. I, I like this pattern because I don't have to do the crown decreases. Um, and sometimes I just really don't like doing crown decreases. Okay, so that's all I finished. Um, so not a whole lot, I mean, considering it's been three weeks, but <sighs> life, man, life. <laughs> so um, I just wanted, uh, you know, I wanted to finish something, and I have my goals that I had for this year, and I know I'm behind on my charity crafting, so I just was like, okay, I'll get a couple of hat hats done, and that'll be fine. Um, with the rest of the yarn, I think I'm going to try to crochet like I mentioned, I'm going to kind of crochet with it and see if I like working it with it better from crocheting. I might. Um, it didn't really like split or anything, so I think it'll be good. Let's see. I'll let you know next time. All right, so works in progress. I'll just go ahead and show this one to you because it was sitting right here. This is a Fat Squirrel Fibers bag. Um, I believe this is her, this is the regular sweater size bag. Christmas pattern because I bought this last year. I have to the holiday season. Well, I mean, it's not really a Christmas pattern, but it's like, you know, holiday trees. It's fun enough that you can actually, I think you can use it year round. But anyway, so I said, I'm pretty sure I said that I was going to have this done by this week. <laughs> no, that did not happen. Okay. What is happening here? It did not happen. And now I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So <laughs> My desk is a little bit of a disaster with all this stuff sitting on there. All right, so I did finish, where was I at last time? I think I was doing the panel, that's what it was. I think I had one panel left to do, and I, again, did not prepare. It's all, like, jumbled up, and yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram, I have these little wonder clips in there to kind of keep them, or to keep it kind of from stretching out too much or anything. But I'm just going to show you. Okay, can you find the other end of the needle? There we go. Uh, 
All right, so you can see there is the armhole and the panel, and it looks like it doesn't line up, but it does. It's just crooked right now. I'm holding it weird, um, but it does. I can see it through here, but it does. Um, yeah. So I finished. I think I was. I think I was at the back section. I almost positive I was. I think I was working the back. I did that, um, and then I did the other. I thought I saw a string hanging out. And then I did the other um, front panel, which is right here. And then I everything was on um, waste yarn, and I uh, did three needle bind off at the shoulder seams. To, let's see where they at. I'm not even showing it to you, am I? Right here. No, right here. So I didn't think about it, but I could have done it um, inside out or right side out. Actually, I I moved it. I turned it inside out before I did did the three needle bind off. Had I done it right side out, I would have been left with a ridge there too. So I'm okay with how it looks, but um, just a little detail that I could have added. It does fit. I put it on. It fits. I was excited because <laughs> um, I was a little. I was like, oh, what if it doesn't fit? If it's actually a little bit big, um, not like, well, I mean, it fits okay if it's now, but I think once it blocks, like once I wash it and blocked it, it will, um, I think it'll be a little too big. I think it's going to get a little big, but that's okay. I would much prefer it to be oversized. I was not wanting anything that was like super fitted or anything anyway. This is supposed to be like a nice, warm, comfy, drink my tea in kind of deal. <laughs> Um, there's that side. And again, I do promise that they do line up. I know it does, but yeah. Okay, um, I did the edging. So if you remember, I had done a provisional cast on because I wasn't sure. I was a little afraid I was going to have to add length to it at the end. I was like, what if I mess up and I think it's too short? And I've had that problem with other ones that I've made. Um, I always underestimate the length. I have a longer torso, like relative to, like, to my length, to my legs. Um, so I tend to forget, or usually when I use regular patterns, they, um, you know, are made for people who have, I guess, like standard length stuff. I feel like I'm getting ready to drop all kinds of stitches. Where is, okay, I'm sorry. I know I'm being like crazy pants right now, but I can't find Oh, it's stuck through the thing. That's nice. Um, yeah. So what I am doing now. Oh, wait. I was talking about the other thing. Oh, gosh. All right. I apologize. I'm trying not to drop stitches because I know I'm going to, and it's going to make me really sad. But anyway, <laughs> I did the um, edging. So you can see that little white dotted line through there. That's the waist, or the um, lifeline I had put in what I did the provisional cast on and it ended up the length ended up being really really nice and this is super wash yarn and so it's going to grow so it's actually gonna that's the reason I think it's gonna be a little big so I just added um, like an inch of seed stitch which is what I did on the this part I added just a little bit there I'm hoping it's enough to make it not curl at the edges, um, but if it does, what I might do is add like maybe tack in some ribbon or something to like weigh it down just a little bit, but we'll see how that works when it actually gets done. <laughs> but there's the points. And what I did on the points since I was increasing, I was, you know, doing increases, um, is I did... I'm pretty sure I did knit front and back and I did um, garter stitch instead of seed stitch just between I set up two markers so that way like I just increased from there um, let's see if I can show it to you and I think with the black yarn you're not gonna be able to tell the difference honestly and that's that was what I was thinking too I was like you're not really gonna be able to see it I can see it up close but even like that far it just kind of looks like a black blur um, right now I am working on the collar. I have one side done already. 
And now I'm working on this side. I'm trying to show you the best there. Okay, so basically you do, you, I had my, the stitches on waist yarn and I put them back on the needle and then you just kind of continue in pattern. Like you have to do um, a couple of short rows, I think like four short rows to kind of turn here and then you work even until middle of the neck, like so, like the middle of the back. And then I'll join those, the two sides together and I'll probably have to tack it down because I'm sure it'll probably do some kind of crazy stuff, but we'll see. And yes, yeah, so I have the other one done. It's all rolled up, so I'm not going to pull it out of there. But it'll look like, see, it folds like this. So this is the right side. This is what you'll see. And that's the, the wrong side. So, yeah. Um, so I have that to do, and then I have the sleeves. I was looking at the sleeve directions, and for some reason... For some reason, I thought you we were doing like a, is that a set in sleeve, like a short row set in sleeve. I'm not really, um, oh, like super up uh, or super aware of terminology when it comes to like sleeve construction. So I think it's a set in sleeve. That's what I thought it was going to be, where you just start the short rows, like you do it like a, it's a sleeve cap, and then you kind of go down and pick up stuff. But I took a look at the directions again, and it's, I have to work from the bottom up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little scared to try to modify that because I don't know if I've ever actually done the short row sleeve cap deal. Um, I actually don't think I ever have because when I've made like little sweaters like for babies and stuff, I'm almost positive I've always done like rag ones. And um, yeah. So I don't know. The yarn of this jumbled mess, the yarn is Knit Picks uh, Hawthorne Kettle Dye. Black is Blackbird. The gray is Slate. I really, I really like the way the yarn looks. Um, I don't think it's true for all of the yarn. I, it has not been, there's, I've not had any issues with the gray, but with the black, I've had yarn or dye transfer when I'm using, like it's on, it gets all over my fingers and my hands and stuff, like where the yarn rubs, um, from where I'm like tensioning my yarn. It's not a big deal, it washes off, but it is something to kind of be aware of. Um, and also I, when I go to wash it and block it, I'm a little worried that it's going to kind of do something. <laughs> Like it's gonna bleed all over the place. So I've got those color catcher things that you stick in um, the wash, and I'm just gonna use a couple of those or one of those for sure. Um, and the needles I've been using for this entire thing are uh, Chow Goose, those are my interchangeable, and these are the five 3.75 millimeters. There we go. So yeah, I really, hopefully, I'll have it done next week. <laughs> Um, I think I need to make it a priority, and I and that's just something that I've not done. Um, I started working on other stuff. Yeah. I think, I can't remember if I had these socks, if I was working on these. I don't think I was. I don't think I was working on these the last time because I think I bought this yarn new, and I think I waited to show it to you guys before I started. Um, the yarn. It is living in a um, this Halk yarn project bag. Exploding TARDIS. I received this from for the Secret Santa swap um, or Secret Santa that uh, Erin gave me on 418. She hosted last year. My partner was Lorna and she's super sweet and she gave me this bag. Um, I'm probably going to switch them into another bag because I think it's more on with theme, but I really like this bag. It's a good size. Um, yeah, it's a box bottom. There you go. And it has stars on the inside. Stars are my favorite shape, in case anybody wanted to know. <laughs> but anyway, on for what I'm doing. I am working on some socks. I had hoped to have these done. Did you see a theme? Um, I am working them in tandem, and 
I currently have yarn all over the place, so apologize about that. The yarn is Undead for, by Undead Yarns, um, and the colorway is This is Halloween. And I absolutely, absolutely love it. Right. So in, on the screen, it looks a little bit mm, less orange than it does in real life. Maybe when I get up closer, it's more accurate. So I have done the heels. I'm doing fish lips kiss heel. And um, I've done like a few rows even of the leg. So I'm some on the ankle still. So I tried them on just to make sure that the heel was in the right place. And I was like, if I just needed just little footy socks, they'd be perfect. <laughs> but no, I still have the leg to do. Um, I, I started these toe up, as you can tell, because I intended to use the yarn, like as much of the yarn as possible, make them as tall as possible. But um, I think I've changed my mind. Because I like the yarn so much, I think I want to. I want something else with it. And I'm thinking like a Susan Claudino pattern. And she came up with these two new patterns. Um, Belfry, it's a little bat, and Booyah. Actually, I think it's one pattern, but there's two little guys in it. And um, I was like, that would be cute. Or, I don't know, a little pumpkin or something. But there's the yarn. Yeah, and again, in real life, it's a little bit more orange. I think it has, it doesn't. It definitely has like pink and peach in it, but it has more more orangey, like a more orange tone to it than it's showing. And there's purple in it too, but it's like a subtle purple. It's really nice though. I really like them. And there's the back. So you can see on this one, it pulled or flashed or whatever, just a little bit on that one. So I made that one the bottom. Um, because I figured since it had more of the dark in there, that it would be good for, I don't know, like in case, like I stepped on something dusty, I don't know. So yeah, um, they don't match exactly, of course, because it's speckle yarn and that doesn't work like that, but yeah. I really, really like it. I like working with the yarn. I like the way it's working up. And I hope that when I do the leg, it does, it works out well too. I should have plenty of yarn left. Um, I am working both from the inside and the outside of the cake. So um, there's a little bit of yarn management that I have to do. Um, but I think I should have enough for like a little, some kind of little toy that I can just like sit and stare at. Because I really, I really want, I really want to. <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can get these wrapped back up. Um, sorry about the jangling of the needles, but I like it and I, yeah, I like it. And it's, you know, it's almost Halloween, which I am excited about because Halloween is my favorite, um, holiday. I like to decorate stuff. I don't often wear costumes, um, but... I will be this year because I couldn't go to the thing that I bought a costume for. So I'm going to wear that. So, all right. And then I have one more. Um, actually, let me put that away while I'm thinking about it. I have one more uh, whip. I'm getting ready to drop stuff. One more whip. And this one, I don't think you've seen because I didn't start it until after. I have a wire basket sitting there. So that's probably what you just heard. Sorry about that. Alright, so this bag is by Lamy Toes. I bought this last time so you can see it. Um, or you can see that video. You can see it. And it is getting washed right out. There we go. Sorry about the blinding whiteness of it all. Um, yeah, so I am using my hand spun. What? Okay, so... <laughs> Let's try not to do this. Um, the shawl is the Be Simple Variation Shawl. I did um, I did one of these before. It's actually, you can see right, see right there. I did this in fingering weight before. This yarn is closer to a DK. Um, and I don't really care that it's going to be kind of thick and everything. I figure this will be like my scarf-esque type deal for the year. Or for the season. And I will be freezing my bum off. 
or my neck in this instance. But no, I won't because I'll have this. All right, so yeah, um, it's really simple. That's why it's called Be Simple. Um, basically, you work in garter, and then you do an eyelet row, and you do increases. It's a free pattern. Um, I cannot remember who who did it. I feel like I feel like her name's Carolyn, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm using Chowgu interchangeable needles. These are size nine. 5.5 millimeter. Um, I did a little test swatch of this because I wasn't sure what size I wanted to, like how open I wanted it. You know, when you block it, um, you can't really see that. You know, I, I wasn't sure how how open I wanted it versus how dense. So yeah, I have a little stitch marker here, just indicating which side gets the increases. Um, cause I will forget when I'm working on it. So yeah, I have just barely started it, but I really like it. There's the yarn. Um, this yarn was from Turtle Made and, um, it didn't have a colorway or anything like that, but I bought it at a wool gathering two or three years ago. The first time I went. Um, yeah, I think it was three years ago. So yeah, I really, I really like how it's working out. It's very squishy, squish, 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 because it's garter and also because it's hand spun. And um, there's hair in it. That's mine. So yeah, there's probably some hair in my hand spun. <laughs> uh, that's nice. But anyway, so I think it's working out pretty well. Okay, you can't even see that. I like it. I like it. I hope it continues to do that, but I think it, it will stop kind of having that striping kind of effect at some point because this yarn didn't have particularly um, long color repeats. So like it was like little, little like pops of color. Um, but there were some sections that were a little longer, so maybe. But yeah, it's about a DK weight, so this will be a little bit of a thicker thing, so I'm thinking this will be good for, um, you know, like winter, winter, like snow winter, which hopefully will be here soon. Not really. I actually really prefer, prefer it would if it would just stay like fall, because let's just say I've not had the air conditioning on, and it's been lovely. Not because I dislike air conditioning, because I don't, but um, it's nice not to have to use it. And that is all of the works in progress that I actually worked on. <laughs> um, coming up, I have a few things that like, I need to clean up my basket of whips um, because it's just, there's just so much stuff in there and I want to kind of get through things that, I, the things I've started, which I keep starting new projects, but well, not keep starting new projects, but I have this like urge to start new things. Like I really wanted to finish those socks and stuff and the sweat and the cardigan, but I cast that on and then I cast on for the um, charity hats because I just needed to, <laughs> because I needed to. Um, but yeah, but I am going to work on my, um, that Chevron blanket that I started years ago. I mean, lots of years ago. I really want to get that finished this year. And honestly, I, I I came with, or not came with, I had bought eight big skeins of yarn. Like, almost, I think they were seven and a half ounce skeins or eight ounce skeins. Big skeins of Vanna's Choice. And I am just a teeny way, teeny, teeny little bit into the third of each color. So there were four of each color. So basically have almost two, like I'm basically halfway through. And um, if I end up only getting through six of the eight skeins, I may just call it a day um, and just be like, I'm done with it. <laughs> because I really like the blanket and I want to use it, but at the same time, like, I don't know. That's a lot that is a lot of double crochet. And, um, yeah, 
but it's where it's cooler now, especially in the evenings. Um, I'll be able to pull it out and, you know, use it as a blanket while I work on it. So that'll be nice. And then I have, um, I started a crochet shawl and, um, it's using like really, really tiny, like thin yarn. And I don't usually enjoy crocheting with fingering weight or thinner yarn. Um, but I really actually like, I really like the shawl, so I want it. <laughs> I just don't want to like make it. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll work it out, but I don't know. So I'm either going to fin, I'm either going to just like frog it or I'm going to actually work on it. So I think there'll be a little bit more crochet next time. And hopefully if I finish those socks, I will start a new pair of socks. Speaking of the socks, um, I bought a thing that I might actually move those socks into. Yeah. So let's just, we're going to go on to purchases now. Um, so the first thing I purchased, I think, uh, we're not going to do timeline because <laughs> I won't remember. But anyway, I bought another uh, sock size bag from the Fat Squirrel. She is Amy Beth. She has um, the Fat Squirrel Speaks podcast and she's really funny and she um, she's really sweet and everything. So yeah. And she makes bags and I like them. I really like her sock size bags. I have two others, I think. Two, this might be, I think this is my third. Um, she had kind of a fall Halloween theme. These are these women with little cat masks on. The inside has these little ghosties. And it's that same kind of mustardy uh, yellow color. And the handle is that same fabric. So her bags, they are box bottom bags, but they're not really deep. Okay. Which I find the uh, in my purse, these work best. I don't have a huge bag that I carry or anything like that. So, and the way it's just kind of configured and all my other stuff that's in there, these kind of fit in there because I can sit it in there and then I can fold it. And that, that fits well for me. So, yeah, I like it. Um, I'm pretty sure this fabric is... I'm not a, I don't know like brands of fabric for the most part, but I'm pretty sure this is co um, it's a cotton and steel. I think that both these fabrics are cotton and steel, but maybe. I don't know. Well, I mean the print, I don't know about the actual fabric, but I think that's true. I might be wrong. So I bought that. This was a pre-order um, and now it is mine. And I think I'm going to put those Halloween bags in it because it just, or, or the Halloween socks in it because, you know, Halloween and then I bought stuff. Um, I did not go to a wool gathering this year, um, which sucks, but you know, I, I couldn't, or well, I probably could have, but I didn't go anyway. <laughs> and one person that I really wanted to see who's there and she had not vended while I've been there was Tuft Woolens. Um, she makes sock soap and regular soap and, um, hand balm and things like that. And, um, so I didn't get a chance to go there, so I ordered something from her store. She had an update, and so I just ordered it. And I almost showed you my address, so let's not do that. So I ordered um, three things. The first is this soap. It is, um, what is the color? Eucalyptus Lemon. So this is the bath bar. And you can see it's got little spots in it. Those are exfoliants. Um, I can't remember what she said it was. I don't think she says on here. Yeah. So that, the ingredients she has on here are her base, and then I guess she adds two stuff to it. But anyway, it smells really good. I opened up the plastic because you couldn't smell it really well through the plastic, so I opened it up to smell it, and it's lovely. It smells like eucalyptus and lemon. Um, <laughs> but it smells really good. And I had this sitting in my living room, and like on the on the bookcase after I got it and my whole house like not my whole house but like my living room and hallway and like the open part of my house all smelled like it so it is it's not really a strong smell like it's not like ooh, but it's noticeable I guess 
I don't use like lemon scents or anything to clean with, so maybe that's why I can smell it the most. But um, yeah, and then I bought she has lip balm, and I think this is just like beeswax and um, well, there's a few things, coconut oil and you know some different oils and aloe and Ohio honey. So yeah, it's not flavored or anything, but it's nice. And I have, I did use it a couple of times and it does work. So I get really dry lips in the winter. I have dry skin anyway. And in winter it gets bad. <laughs> so I try to like combat that with all of the things. Um, yeah, here's our card. And then that's like another one that has the instructions for her sock soap, which I bought a bar of. Um, so this comes, the, her sock soap comes in brown wrapping. And this is the sugar skull scent. And I opened it up already to smell it. And um, it's, re it's really nice. My husband liked this. He was like, you should have got a bath bar that. He sometimes uses. He probably, he probably won't like me if, or like it if I say it, but he sometimes will use my, like when I buy soap and stuff for myself, like the scented stuff. I mean, I usually don't buy anything that's like too floral or anything like that. Like I don't, I don't really like those scents. So maybe he just likes, I don't know, he likes the stuff I like too. But yeah, so this, it's black or a really dark color. It's kind of fun. I don't think, I have not tested them, like to make sure like it's not going to look like the dye or what, I don't think she uses dye, but um, whatever she uses to make it that color, I don't, you know, I don't think it'll transfer, but I'll test that just to make sure, but I, I know other people have used it and they've not said anything, so it's, it'll probably be okay. So yeah. Yay! So what you do with this is basically wool wash. But where, um, if you want it, you can use it as wool wash, or you can actually rub it on your socks, on like, and then like lather them up really good, if you want to. So whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, I really like those two smells. So I think the eucalyptus lemon is new, or. So. Okay, so we had some technical difficulties. I went to pick something up, and my camera fell. <laughs> so I'm back. All right, so I got my club shipment from Hello Yarn. This is, um, I did a three month club and this is shipment two. So I have one more after this. This one is called Sinister Things. Um, it's on merino wool top, four ounces. And I'm sorry about the crinkling. Um, it does not come braided. I braided it for storage. Um, it's not really braiding, it's chaining. I need to go and do it with the other one too because it actually takes up way less space when you do it that way. Um, but yeah, so it's really nice. I really like how it comes out. There's some purple in here that's not coming up on camera. Um, like that. Well, that looks kind of like purple, but that one doesn't. There's some purple in there and it's really nice. I like it. Um, it's very soft. Obviously, I've not used it yet, so I can't tell you how that is, but it's it's nice so far. And then, let's see if I can do this without knocking the camera over again. I'm sorry about the crinkling. Sorry. Um, I bought yarn from Nomadic Yarns. Did I show you this last time? No, I think I might have mentioned it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, crinkling. So this is Nomadic Yarns. Let's see. There we go. The colorway is Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. Um, I think this is like eight. It's an eight striper. Um, so yeah, this is on her trusty sock base, 462 yards, 100 grams, 75, 25. Super wash. So. Um, and she recommends hand washing. So yeah. And she gives sends a she sends a little stitch marker too. It's a definitely hallow symbol. I'm excited. Um yeah, so I'm really excited to try these out. I've never, um, I'm, these might be my next ones that I cast on, actually. Maybe. Um, 
And these I will definitely make them as long as possible. <laughs> Did, yeah, I was, I was gonna make sure I was like that I got the longer base, but anyway, um, really cute, really cute. And while I was ordering this, so she has like a pretty long uh, turnaround time. I think it was like four or five weeks, because I think she dies to order. I mean, I think sometimes she does have stuff in stock, but this was a die to order one, so it takes a while, and that's fine. But you know, I'm just going in. It may take a while if you order from her. And her um, yarns are a little pricey, but her striping sequences are not, um, they seem like they would be a little bit more involved. I mean, this is obviously eight different colors, which that's going to take a little bit more. And then she's got other ones that are, you know, like they're, they're not even striping. So like there's, there's just more. So um, it's a little expensive and it's not something that I'll be buying like all the time. But every once in a while. And I really just, I really liked this colorway. There's just a bunch of really just, you know, fun, like the lime green. And I don't know. I think it's going to be really pretty. So while I was ordering that, I ordered a bag. And if you're, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. But if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Crafting with Cloudy. Um, and yeah, so... This is a cube, like a box bag, with the Golden Girls on it. Like, I saw it, and I was like, I have to buy it. Like, I, I have to. I don't get a choice about it. So this one really features Blanche. Like, this, she's, you see her face more often than everybody else. But, um, where was B. Arthur? Yeah. I'm a little sad that there's not more Sophia on here, because she was, she's my favorite. But, um, she's just so... She's just a Sophia, but um, I really like it. So it's a, you know, a box bag. The inside has, what kind of fabric in it? Just um, kind of a light pattern, like a little spotted kind of thing. Um, yeah, this is a good size for socks. I mean, clearly it would hold a skein of socks and some needles. And it has the Golden Girls on it. And, yes. She had another Golden Girls pattern that had, like, there were, like, little, um, little circles with their faces on it. But I wanted this one because I just, I don't know, it made me happy. It's all tumbled together. It makes me happy. Um, though I think if I were going to do this again, I think I would probably, for this pattern, I would get the larger box bag. Because you'd get... The pattern's a little big, scale-wise, but um, not, I mean, not a big deal. Just like a little tidbit in case you were interested in buying one of these. You may want to think about getting, um, she has a large box bag, so it's rectangular instead of square. But yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, one more thing. So, I know, one more thing. So, I bought this. This is from Unwind Yarn Company. The colorway is Goth Girl. I love it. Oh my goodness. So she had three skeins of this and I really should have bought all three. But I was like, well, I was, I was thinking a shawl and I was like, I don't really need all of the yardage. Um, but yeah, so this is her twinkle soft base. So it's sparkly. I don't know if you can see it, but it is sparkly. You cannot see it, but it is. Trust me. It's very sparkly. Um, 75 super wash merino, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina, 438 yards, 200 grams. Um, it is very beautiful. So green is my favorite color, purple right there, right there with it. So yeah, I, I don't know. I have a little bit of regret about not buying the third skein. <laughs> yeah, I'll be okay. I'll be fine. I really do like the color. She had her Halloween things out, so that's the reason this one. Um, it's called Goth Girl, I guess. She had one that I really wanted to get to, and it was, um, oh, it was a Rocky Horror Picture Show colorway name. Now I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember now. <laughs> but um, I really liked the color of it, and now I just can't remember. But yeah, I was really excited to get it. This is the first time I've ever ordered yarn from her. And it is beautiful. 
I really, really, really like this color purple. Um, so, yeah. It will be nice, and I will have a nice big, I'm thinking like something really big and maybe lacy. We'll see. All right, so that is all of that kind of goodnessy things to show you. Um, so let's talk about life. So I went out of town for a little bit, um, well, just for like a couple days, but it was much needed and very, very nice to not be, you know, just not be here. Not that I don't like my house or anything, but sometimes like you need to get away in order to actually be able to let like your mind stop, <laughs> stop worrying about stuff and all of that. So, um, we did that and then, um, See, I was supposed to go this pat like pat last week. I was supposed to go, or no, not last week, the week before that. We had, before all this stuff with my dad happened, you know, I had these plans for the rest of the year. And one of the things was that I was going to be going to this thing where I was going to go pretend to be a wizard or witch, whatever. And I know it sounds really stupid, but it was going to be really fun. And unfortunately, I didn't get to go. Um... I had to cancel, so. Uh, I, so we were home for a little bit. So we did get some stuff done around the house, but I still had to get away because <laughs> I was a little upset. Um, but it was fun, and uh, then I'm trying to think of everything else that's happened. Honestly, like, it's just been, it's not like there's been, like, anything, like, super traumatic or anything like that. It's just been a lot of dealing with things that I just don't want to deal with. Um, yeah. But sometimes you have to, and and having to kind of deal with those things, it just, I, I mean, I'm sure it does for everybody, but it just drains the out of me. <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. Forcing yourself to do something that you really just don't want to deal with, like you just don't want to do, um, is never fun. And when it kind of constantly keeps happening, it becomes, I don't know, it just becomes like you just kind of want to avoid everything. Luckily, like it's not been really bad or anything like that. Like I've been good, <laughs> but... I have need to take like a few, you know, like a break here and there where I literally just am like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to answer my phone. I'm not going to like, I don't know. I'm not going to leave the house today. That kind of deal. Like I'll go look at the sun, but I'm not going to like leave my property line. <laughs> so yeah. Um, sorry, it's my phone. Um, but yeah, I just think like, I had to take a couple like days where I just kind of let all of that go and and since I did that I feel much better it was much 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 needed and I'm really thankful for being able to to do that and kind of get back on track also what helped is that um, you know I had to take like a real hard look at what's been going on and what was like what the plans were and everything like that and I just decided that well, not just me, like my husband and I, we've been talking about it. And, you know, we were looking for a house. We were going to be buying a new house. We were under contract on another house. Um, and then the stuff with my dad happened. Not, well, the house didn't fall through because of that. But then the stuff, you know, happened with my dad. And we put that on, you know, put it on pause to kind of figure out what we we're going to need to do. Were, were we going to have to move up there? Because my dad lives in Ohio and I live in northern Kentucky. And so he's like about 45 minutes away from me. And, like, if I needed to move up there, you know, that's, you know, like, that's a different thing. And I didn't really, it's not that I, I don't really want to actually move into Ohio. Nothing wrong with Ohio. I just um, prefer the side of the river. But, you know, so it was a lot. To, it was kind of, like, draining on us just a little bit, like, because we didn't have anything settled. We weren't sure when we were going to start. We weren't sure anything like that. Occasionally we'd look at like houses or we'd go talk to people or whatever, but, um, we just ended up deciding that we are going to just stop looking for houses 
um, until the, until next year. Um, I expected it to kind of like that kind of like decision to make me feel better or like lift a weight or anything like that. It didn't, <laughs> but I mean, my husband was like, well, that's probably because like, you know, we're still gonna have to do it. It's not done yet. We expected to be done by now when it came to like, we did not think we were going to be still looking at houses by October, given how early we started, um, and how many houses were available, you know, on the market and everything. So we didn't think it was going to be like a long process like it was with buying this house that we live in now. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we're just gonna wait and I figure I'm like, well, we really wouldn't wanna sell our house in winter anyway, but maybe we can find a deal. Like we, we were talking about maybe getting another foreclosure. This house was a foreclosure. And we're like, maybe we can get into the foreclosure and we can get into, like, we can, when we sell the house, we'll actually make a little bit of money on it um, versus, you know, buying a house and then hoping that it increases. Because the house prices around here don't usually grow. Like, they're not, like, getting better. I mean, they get up a little bit. And it's much better than when we bought this house. But we bought this house, like, during the housing market disaster. Um... So, you know, we got a deal on this one. Now things have kind of recovered a little bit, but, um, so anyway, we're just thinking maybe we'll just buy it in spring or not buy it in spring. We'll sell this one and buy another one in spring. Um, but if something um, like amazing came along or like one of the few houses that we know around the neighborhood or like near our neighborhood, like we drive past them all the time and we're like, oh, I'd really like that house or maybe we should look at that house or whatever you know like we cut kind of, we kind of talk about it a little bit and um if it ever came, ever became available maybe we'll try it well so well you know whenever we'll never know if like or we don't know ahead of time if one of those houses will become available but if they do you know we might change our mind and move up the the process a little bit but for now we're just we're done <laughs> we're done for now so it's fine um That'll let us kind of focus on other things and it'll be good. Um, yeah. I've been watching a lot of Netflix and Hulu. Um, on Hulu, I've been, I started watching a show. It's called Difficult People. It, um, I think Amy Poehler is the producer. And I can't remember the leading uh, lady's name. Like her, 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 her real name. I can't remember. Um, but it has uh, the guy, he was in the last season of Parks and Rec, Craig, like the guy that like yelled a lot. <laughs> um, he's in that. And um, basically it, it, it's pretty funny, but like it's, it's called Difficult People and they're difficult people. So like if you're looking for like a likable, like really likable characters, this is not the show for you. Um... So maybe give it a watch, see if you like it. But I, I mean, I think it's gonna, it's it's directed for like someone with a very specific type of humor. Um, apparently I like it, so. Uh, what else did I watch? Oh, I finished watching Stranger Things. I think I talked about that last time. So good, so good. The acting was so good and um, I really liked it. Can't wait for season two, I mean, we gotta wait a big bunch of time, but. I want to know, like, who's coming back. I'm going to try to, like, be spoiler-free when they start leaking details and stuff like that. Like, I'm going to try to, like, la 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 <laughs> um, Because I really, I want it to be, like, this one was where I really, I mean, I heard, like, good things, but I didn't really know anything else about it. Um, and I watched the latest, the latest Netflix season of American Horror Story uh, Hotel. So I watched that. It was good, but I don't know. It, spoilers. Okay, so if you've not watched it already or you're not done with it, just don't listen. But if you don't care, I mean, like, you care about it, but you're not going to watch it. It's not going to spoil it for you. Um, the ending, the way it ends, was just, like, way too happy. <laughs> I don't know. It just see, I was, like, waiting. Given how, like, dark the season was and everything, like, I expected it to be more... I don't know. Macabre, 
maybe. Um, I just didn't expect it to like wrap up in like happy bow kind of package. So, um, but it's still a good season. Uh, Lady Gaga was in this one and she did a really good job. I mean, for the character that they were going, like they were doing, I think that casting was absolutely perfect. She, she even did a good job, like when she wasn't being like the, the diva. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really good. So uh, there were a couple moments where I was just like, or not a couple moments, but there were a couple characters. I was just kind of like, what's up with that accent? <laughs> What are you doing here? What's happening? Um, but it was good. It was good. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm not, I'm still really behind on videos, like watching everybody else's videos. I'm so behind. I mean, I'm at least, I know I'm at least two months behind on some people's. And I've been trying to, like, pick a person and then just get caught up with that person. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to just kind of declare bankruptcy maybe watch like the last video for people and then just clear my watch later list because I just don't think I'm ever going to get through it all. Cause I mean, you know, like when you're talking about like 45 minutes to an hour for most people, that's a long time. And speaking of time, <laughs> I have been talking for a very, very long time. So I'm going to go. Um, I hope you guys are really well and, um, Please let me know how you've been. I want to know. And um, have you made any purchases? I mean, I can't be the only one who's like buying stuff. I mean, that's not, I mean, it's like three weeks. Some of it was bought way before. Just saying. And I just waited to get it. But still. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys next time. Bye.